Breaking tonight, the stunning march of a frightening new terror group taking control in the heart of the Middle East in a vacuum left by America's commander in chief. Welcome to The Kelly File, everyone. I'm Megan Kelly. Earlier today, new pictures of what may become our newest foreign policy crisis. We cannot yet independently confirm this, but we are told this is amateur video of an incredibly radical Al Qaeda offshoot celebrating the capture of the Iraqi city of Tikrit. This is the same group that 24 hours ago announced the capture of Mosul, where Al Qaeda flags today fly over a town where hundreds of Americans died, driving terror forces from this region. Eyewitnesses say when this group swept into Mosul, a half million people ran in terror, including the Iraqi soldiers that we paid to train. This is the third major city this group has taken over in recent weeks. First it was Fallujah, then Mosul, now Tikrit. Tonight we believe they control all of this territory, and they are nowhere near done. One of the generals who warned that leaving this country too soon and with no residual forces in place would result in, quote, absolute disaster, is my next guest, four-star general and former vice chief of staff of the Army, General Jack Keane. General, thank you so much for being here. And, Glad to be here. And the question I have for you tonight is the vision that Osama bin Laden had of a caliphate, of an Islamic state where they would live amongst themselves and plan jihad against the West, coming to fruition as we see that map expand. That's absolutely what's happening, Megan. This has been a 30-year intellectual drive for them to dominate and control Muslim lands and this is forming right in front of us. It begins east of Aleppo in Syria and moves all the way to the Syrian border. Not everything, but a lot of territory and a lot of towns. And then northern Iraq and western Iraq and closing in on the capital city of some seven million people. This caliphate exists and it will be the most menacing thing in the Middle East, Middle East if unattended. You, you warned about this. I mean, I, I understand how people are going to feel about going into Iraq in the first place. But we were there, and we sacrificed 4,500 American men and women uh, to, to liberate that country. And people were voting. They were, the Iraqis were voting. And we left without any residual forces. We announced our withdrawal date. And people like you, who have devoted your life to this issue, to these types of issues, were jumping up and down saying, we will lose it all if we don't handle this differently. Your thoughts on where we now are tonight? Well, in places like Germany, Italy, uh, Japan, and South Korea, after conflict where we left forces, we've had enormous success. We didn't want to leave forces there because of major security problems. We had some issues with al-Qaeda leadership, but the al-Qaeda leadership in 2009 had admitted that they were defeated and don't send any more fighters. So the issue in front of us was to keep an eye on them, keep our intelligence sources, keep all our plugs to every intelligence source that we have in front of the, uh, the Iraqi security forces, and then to work the political maturation of Maliki and his government by staying engaged. We pulled the forces out, Maliki resented that, we had no leverage with him, and then we could no longer do what we had done for a number of years, Megan, and that is save Maliki from himself. Now, but, Maliki but deserved... let me ask you this, because I think that, you know, the Americans, you know, they're, they're worried about what's going to happen to Americans. They worry about the Iraqis as well. But, but when we look back at how this has unfolded, you know, first, first came Fallujah, and, and men like you raised red flags after that as well, saying this is going to go from bad to worse. The president was asked about the, the, the terrorists retaking Fallujah in January of 2014, and he told, I think it was the New York Magazine, and perhaps we have the quote and we can put it on the board for the, for the viewers, that they were JV, that this was JV al-Qaeda. The analogy we use around here sometimes, and I think this is accurate, is if a JV team puts on a Lakers uniform, that doesn't make them Kobe Bryant. That seemed to betray an attitude about this group that we didn't need to take them very seriously. And now tonight they've captured two more cities. Well, the fact of the matter is the administration has been focused on the senior leadership of the al-Qaeda in Pakistan, and they have decimated that leadership to a degree, as the president has said. But what he doesn't tell the American people is that all of that leadership has been replaced 
almost immediately, as was Osama bin Laden. The fact of the matter is, the al-Qaeda and its affiliates, as you have noted many times, Megan, is on the rise in the Middle East and in Africa. And this is the most significant accomplishment the al-Qaeda have had to date in its history. Why are they on the rise? I mean, you know, is it, obviously we left a vacuum behind us in Iraq, but what is it about, in other words, is there something we could be doing to be stopping this? Yeah, absolutely. We have no comprehensive strategy, none, to defeat the al-Qaeda and its affiliates. We need political and military alliances in these countries where we can help train people, provide intelligence, share it, provide technology, provide equipment, much as we did post-World War II against the communist ideology, we formed political and military alliances and got together and said, we're not going to stand for this threat, and that was very successful. Why aren't we, we doing that? We're doing none of that, Megan. None of it. There's, we help a little bit in Yemen, we help a little bit in Kenya, we help a little bit in Somalia, but no comprehensive strategy to share intelligence and do all the things that I have suggested. This is not rocket science. We don't have to fight all these people. We can let those countries do it, but they need intelligence and they need our skill sets and the benefit of what we have learned by being engaged with these organizations for over 10 years. General Jack Keane, thank you, sir. Take care, Megan.